Welcome and thank you for tuning in. You're listening to the Beyond 50 radio program. I'm Daniel Davis. Approaching midlife brings a lot of changes into a person's life. It could be a change in a love life, a change in family status, or perhaps a whole new outlook on what you're going to do with yourself when it comes to a career. Some of us find that as we dig down deep inside that we want to really make a difference in the world, especially when it comes to the lives of other people. And we find sometimes that some types of natural intuitive abilities arise and we think, how do I share that with the world? On the Beyond 50 radio program today, we're going to be talking with the director of Arise School of Healing Arts. It's a counseling and healing enrichment center, which is located in Portland, Oregon. We're going to be talking about how we can develop and become what is known as a light worker. I'd like to welcome to the Beyond 50 radio program today our guest, Dr. Laurelyn Mirage Cardo. How are you doing, Dr. Cardo? Great. Thanks for having me on the show, Daniel. Well, you know, you're a light worker, so you should be doing fantastic, I would imagine. What (laughs) is a light worker exactly? (laughs) Well, a light worker is an interesting term. Um, Those of us in the field of energy healing, we've kind of brought that term um, in to mean people who really are consciously um, shining our own light. I mean, if you're looking at all of us were beings of love and light. On an energy level, our scientists say that we um, energy cannot be created or destroyed, and so we're vibrational beings. But light workers, we really have to work with the light and to bring energy healing to ourselves, to other people, to the planet, to wherever it's needed. Now, how long have you been involved as a light worker? How did all this start for you? Well, for me, I came from a different, um, unique pathway. I'm a counselor. I've been trained as a counselor and a counseling psychologist, so I've worked in the field for many years. Sorry. I worked in the field many years as a counselor. And so I um, started realizing after about 10 years or so, people aren't healing as quickly and clearly and strongly as they can with just talk therapy and all the methods that we have, including medications, um, not enough. So I started bringing in and working with energy tools and working with as a light worker to integrate energy healing with traditional counseling methods. And that has proven to be wonderful. It helps people move so fast um, through their issues and empowers them on very different levels. So I have been doing this for about 20 years now as um, a light worker and energy worker uh, along with my counseling. Now, when somebody goes to a light worker, I guess, what is usually their intention on the visit? Um, Usually, we'll say for me in particular, people will come to me for personal, relationship, career, um, because I do career counseling. I do um, all different types of counseling, marital, family, their children. So they're coming... Um, for help on a certain level, but many of them, if they know that I'm a light worker because I, I am, I'm pretty straight about my method because no sense, everybody has different methods, so you want to feel good about the method of the person you're coming to work with. So they're coming to me and then I explain to them and they get experience with me during their session. So we could be talking and doing some guided counseling and getting information from them. They could also get on the table. It's like a Reiki session, if you've heard of Reiki. Um, I use Reiki, and I use many, a few other methods, and then I train people. So the fun part is once you start understanding um, more about the nature of the universe and the nature that we are vibrational beings and we can do this, we all have access to this skill, um, then I love to have people step forward and learn it themselves, and they don't have to come and pay somebody like me to do work for them. They can do it for themselves. So it's very empowering. And then other people on the other end of the spectrum, they're coming specifically for training. They want to be a healer. They want a career change, and they want to learn how to do it. And then I will train them from beginning to end. I can work with introductory or advanced level. Now, can anyone be a light worker? Is this something that you actually develop as a skill, or is it something that maybe comes to people intuitively? Um, I'd say both. Most people um, that come, they do feel like a a longing in their heart or maybe a, a, a desire, I wish I could learn how to do this. Can I learn how to do this? And I tell people, yes, 
if you're coming to me, then you're, you're, if you're listening to this show and you're coming to me, then yes, you have what it takes to be a light worker. We, we really just need to learn how to use different tools that feel comfortable to us. I mean, there's so many methods right now, so I always tell people, good to be discerning. See what you feel um, com- is you're drawn to or you feel comfortable with, uh, and then follow your heart. Because there are many teachers at this point, the, at this time, it's so great, so many methods that's available. So if you want to learn it, you can learn it. Again, there's a whole other group of people who are born with very strong intuitive gifts. And at this time, we don't have training for people from childhood on. Um, we can train people who are good at math and people who are good at basketball. Um, we could train artists, but we don't really necessarily f- train children who are very good at intuitive gifts. So sometimes people don't know how to use their gifts, or they might be afraid of their gifts and not want to have them around. They might feel like, oh, I, I had a dream that something was going to happen, and it happened, and now I'm afraid I don't want that. So people come to me to have, learn how to have boundaries and how maybe not to use their gifts. That's interesting, too. There's no doubt this is fascinating work, especially as people come to try to understand these things. And what kind of changes do you tend to see people who decide to pursue this as a career and being able to develop it to a, a way that they can actually earn you know, a good living? Um, well, definitely uh, I'm a believer in physician heal thyself. <laughs> so it's good to start with yourself and really be able to bring a sense of harmony and clarity and empowerment to your own life. And then as you do this, um, then you, um, and if you want to do this as a career, then there are numbers of ways to be trained and to learn. I also help people um, to step into doing this professionally. Mm -hmm. And some people want to do it just as, say, they want to go to hospice. They feel they don't want money. They just want to be able to go to a hospice or go to an oncology center and and bring some healing work there or with children or animals. A lot of people are drawn to work with animals these days. It's really wonderful. Um, On the other hand, other people really would like to make money and do an actual career change. So, you you know, it's, it's a path. It's definitely a unique journey, and it's always good to have right now a number, a few modalities in place um, so that you can put together a package to um, offer to people. Now, I know that's one of the biggest challenges that people that go into this kind of work have is, you know, how do I go out and earn a living doing this? And through what we're talking about here today, people are able to learn these different elements. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there is specific training. Like, for example, for I'm not going to be able to train somebody to be a counselor. So my work is unique because I have, you know, I've gone up to a doctoral level in my training. But um, yet there are some things that you can be trained to do, how to um, talk to people, how to listen, how to understand what's going on, really what they're, what they're coming to you for. So there's that whole dimension. But then the actual tools, for me, Reiki um, is a, I call it a platform energy. Anybody can learn Reiki. It's a wonderful tool to start an energy practice because it not only introduces you to the field of energy work and how to track energy and monitor and feel energies and set healings in for people and send. So that's one of the major things about Reiki. You can send to yourself to, it's like a future job interview, or you could send to the past um, something that's been bothering you. You could send with permission. There's a lot of ethics that have to be taught with this method. You could send to another person if they um, want you to, because not everybody wants healing, and just because you're a healer doesn't mean you can now just go around and send healing to anybody for any reason. So it's good to really be, again, very discerning and very um, ethical, um, But if somebody wants it and they're not right in front of you, to be able to send to someone or to a situation, how empowering is that? Mm -hmm. So Reiki to me is a wonderful platform energy. There are other methods and there are more advanced um, methods on top of the basic Reiki 1, 2, and Master. But I always tell people you can't go wrong starting there. Even very um, intuitive and highly gifted people, So actually their gifts are much more, um, their clairvoyance or, you know, they have gifts that are much more um, advanced than mine. Still, I feel 
I've trained them in Reiki because, again, as I said, they might want to have a boundary or learn how to use their gifts. So you can't go wrong with a basic toolkit. And that's what I like to teach. Um, it's sacred work, and yes, but it's a toolkit too. And so how to best use your tools and then empower yourself, make your own life changes. If this is what you really feel you would love to do in your life, how then to make that work? And I, try and I work with them to see individually how to help them make that career change. Now, it's interesting when people start embarking on this work, you know, they kind of feel that, you know, in some cases there's that voice that told them that's the direction they go, and then they're full of enthusiasm. Sort of that honeymoon period, I think, a lot of ex- us experience with something new. Right. They go and they pursue this, and then they realize, wow, this is actually work. I just thought this would just kind of fall into my lap like I was something special. <laughs> Not to undermine that, but do you understand what I mean? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> it's as though they, they've gotten this magic wand and it's their total responsibility to go out and heal the world. Right, and, right. You know, as you were saying earlier, well, what makes you so sure that people want to be healed when you go see right. them? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in fact, I've had people say, no, I don't want um, you to send me healing. Uh, I was at once, we were driving out on 84, and um, we had just passed an accident, a car accident, and so we were one of the first cars um, passed it. So I said to my husband, you know, pull over, uh, honey, let us let me just get out and see. And they were two young, um, a boy and a girl, they were in their early 20s, it looked like, and their car was totally flipped over um, on its roof. And they were okay. They looked like a little in shock. The boy actually was kind of laughing a little bit like, look what's look, Look what happened. Oh, my God, look at my car. We're okay. We're okay. The girl seemed a little more shaken up. So I just said, hi, are you guys okay? And somebody was calling 911, and I just said, are you okay? And is there anything I could do? And, and they said, no, no, we're okay. And I just said, you know, I actually am a healer, and um, if you like, I can just sit here with you, and um, I could just help you maybe with a little bit with the shock or the little the girl had like a little bruise on her head. I said, or just maybe take away some of the pain for you if you like. And, and they said, no, 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 we don't want anything like that. No, no, we're fine, we're fine. The boy kept saying, no, we're fine, no. So I said, okay, no problem. I said, I don't even have to touch you if I could actually just sit here and do it without even touching you at all. And they both said, no, 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 we don't want that. But then the girl, there was a dog, it was a basset hound, he was laying there with them, and he was okay, but she just said, but my dog, my dog must be so scared, can you do something for my dog? Mm-hmm. I said, sure. So I just sat there for a minute, and I gave the dog Reiki, <laughs> and, um, and then I just said, are you sure you're okay? And they said, yeah, we're okay, but thanks for helping our dog. And I said, okay, great. And I just felt to go in the car, and the ambulance was getting ready to come and stuff, and my work was done, so... All right, I was there, but they wanted they didn't want any part of me, but they did want it for the dog, and that was great. I was happy to help. You know, and that's the interesting thing, too, is that if you have a skill or whatever it may be that you can offer to someone, wait until the opportunity for a need arises. Don't go out there and just chase everybody and their mother down. because Exactly. You know, you no, it's not know. about proselytizing at all. I agree, though. Sometimes in the beginning you're so excited but always better. Well, if you're excited, use it on yourself. Gosh, how many times in our own life can we, especially if you can send back and forth through time and space, wouldn't you love to send healing energy to yourself somewhere in the past or somewhere in the future? Yeah, go and grab a hold of yourself at the age of 18 and say, what were you thinking? Exactly. What did you do there? Or, you know, what I, with this decision I made, I'm, what, why did I do that? If only I had it. Or, you know, so it could be very tiny or very life-changing, but send to yourself. It's a fascinating part that I find when you do send back to yourself in the past. Um, so you're setting, so it's almost a, so this is like a quantum piece to it where we're looking at um, probable realities. And so now you're sending and adding an element um, of a healing light or an empowering light for yourself. And it almost takes a little bit of time to bubble up to where you are now, but actually, my goodness, you start feeling different. Say, what changed? Why did I feel different about that? And you realize, oh, that must have been when I sent that healing energy back, and we, it kind of changed the past. I mean, we say we can't change the past, but subtly you actually can because time is fluid and it's also cyclical, and when you can see, set healing energies in there. It is kind of fascinating. It's, 
It's almost like science fiction come true. I love it. I love doing this work. Now, I understand that there is an 18-month apprenticeship program in this. Tell us about that. What's entailed if a person should decide to do this? Well, I, I have been teaching classes for energy healers, as I said, almost 20 years. And what I feel is not enough, um, it's not enough just to teach the class, and then I sometimes don't see that person. I offer free practice sessions with me, but um, just doesn't work out for people's schedules or whatever. So I had to sit with myself and say, you know, so many people are interested in this really as something real, not just, oh, I want to just feel good for this one moment. They actually want to do this work. So I designed an 18-month program on three different levels. First level is for somebody who knows nothing. They just want, they are interested and they want to do this, but they're not sure if they can or what is involved. So they come and I just do some basic introductory um, trainings with them. And then in the course of it, they get Reiki 1 and 2, which will allow them to do healing for themselves and then other people and also send healing. And then the next level is for a more intermediate or a higher level, and those people will come uh, learn at a higher level the skills and the skill sets that you need and then get Reiki Master in that. Mm -hmm. um, so you're learning how to stand as a master in the world, not the master. It's not a religion on any level. It's, it's a tool. It's, a, it's an energy tool. So how would a master in this world um, do the dishes and do their email and um, get their laundry in and, and still maintain a sense of calm through it? Mm -hmm. So it's a practical way of still being a master, holding energies on a higher level, but still living your life. And then the third level is really for more advanced energy healers, people who have really had a number of different modalities. They know what they're doing. They're trained. They're at a master level. And I train them in a few um, advanced energy healing techniques. One of them, two of them I've been working on. One is language of light, which is fascinating, very subtle but very powerful. And the other one is called spectrum energetics, and that's an etheric-based, chakra-based healing method. And that's also fascinating and very exciting. So people could come to me really from very introductory all the way through in advance, but they still want to do this and they want to be trained and they want to have a community of light workers that we can work together and um, just bring our light to the world in a much more powerful way. Now, it's interesting when you talk about things such as light work and healing and Reiki and all that. And people seem to ascribe those to, it seems like a group of people that are out there on the fringe. But the right. truth is, Many people that I have talked with that kind of go in this direction of life really come from very mainstream spiritual religious backgrounds. And for instance, in your case, you were raised Catholic all the way up until you finally said, I've had enough of Catholicism in college. You know, and, and that you went in this direction with your life. And you hear that a lot from people. They had something that they were raised, it could be Christian or Catholic or Muslim, whatever the case is, and they somehow feel drawn to this. It's like something perhaps maybe was missing, an answer to a question, who knows. And so they go in this direction in their lives. And I bet that that must have caused some conflict within yourself at some point, didn't it? Wow, that's really a pretty interesting question, Daniel. Um, well, nobody's it is really because asked me you got to deal with a family, for instance, that <laughs> raised you in that direction, and <laughs> somehow you've let them down. <laughs> oh gosh, they were very upset with me. They, I heard nonstop from my grandparents, and Lori, you changed. Lori, you were such a good Catholic girl. What happened to you? <laughs> mm -hmm. So. Um, What's fascinating for me, though, um, but I do have to just give you a quick caveat because it's not it's not a religion. It's not tied to any religion. So, no, and that's why I bring that up because typically it'll be from people who were in these sort of you know family traditional religious beliefs. That's what they were given. That's how they were raised. Right. Not that there's anything wrong with that. If it works in your life, is marvelous, great. Right. But somehow it's people like yourself that there's that question that comes in, like there's, you know, this doesn't make any sense to me, that it's saying this, but the practice is showing this. 
I'd like to go into a realm where it all embodies and, and becomes the same thing, so to speak. Well, that's exactly it. I mean, in college, I always kind of flippantly told my very staunch family that the problem was I had too much Catholic education because I knew about church history and I knew about all these councils who took Jesus' words and changed them the way they wanted to. And then as a young woman in my 20s, to be told I could never use birth control ever or uh, it's a sin and I'll go to hell, that really didn't sit well with me. And then I learned comparative religions in college and I was like, wow, this is, Trained. They're all saying the same thing, but it's coming through a different lens. So I actually, you know, pursued very different, more scientific and counseling-related paths and a spiritual meditative paths um, until I came full circle back to Reiki, which is Japanese through um, uh, maybe through a Buddhist lens, and I had no um, training in that. And then the woman who trained me, how fascinating, she was Jewish and very staunchly Jewish, um, and yet she started saying she's working with first Mary, and she would make a remark saying, she, Mary was a good Jewish mother, so he's, she's welcome to come and work with me, and I hear her son is a hands-on healer, he could come too. And so that was kind of shocking, but I thought, oh my goodness, not going back to Jesus and Mary all these years later through Reiki, but if you are interested in working with higher beings of love and light, then yes, these energy tools will allow you to dialogue in those realms. If that's something you are totally saying, I'm not walking down that path at all, I just want to work with pure energy, then you can work energy work through a pure energy lens. You really don't need to dialogue with magnificent beings like Jesus and Mary or Buddha or Kuan Yin or whoever. Mm-hmm. So it, in one sense, I mean, I've trained a lot. Who I train a lot of um, health care practitioners. I mean, counselors and social workers, too, because that is my field, so I am guided to people. But massage therapists, nurses in particular, because they have been trained in a healing touch. I don't know if you're familiar with Dolores Krieger. She came out in the 70s with a therapeutic touch. She was an RN. So she brought just a piece of therapeutic touch and energy medicine, very light overlay to nurses. So believe it or not, since the 70s, nurses are drawn and healthcare practitioners are drawn very much to this field. Mm-hmm. Um, so as I said, it can be through any lens. That's what I love about it. I kind of tell my family now, I'm, um, it's almost like the sun to me. The sun shines for everyone and um I, I personally just am open to as long as it's a feeling of light and warmth and love and higher consciousness, then I don't need to judge it for anybody else or for myself. But I guess maybe because I was raised with the possibility of beings of love and light, I am kind of fascinated. It did take a little bit of time, but I did contact and work with Jesus and <laughs> Mary. And, you know, it's amazing to when you get an intuitive dialogue going on with these magnificent beings, but it did take a little while because I think I was a little close to it. Mm -hmm. I think, too, for our listeners, what they could also kind of step back and look at this whole thing and appreciate is that you can go into this kind of work to, if nothing more than to come to realize your true interconnectedness with everything uh, within your life. Right. And as you were talking about how doctors and nurses are more and more coming into this work, you know, you realize that the way medicine had been practiced in the past, you know, let's say 60, 70, 80, 100 years, is there was a disconnection. In other words, you came in as a patient, and the doctor and the nurses would look at you as you're the one with the problem. Right. And I think what's fascinating is the work of Dr. Hugh Lin, who does uh, with the Hopo- Hawaiian Ho'oponopono. Ah. And he looked at it as, you know, that here, here was this man who went into basically an asylum, mm-hmm. and within just a few short years, people were actually, who were very severely mentally handicapped, there were murders and all that, they started turning around and becoming very healthy and productive people, actually being released and and the like. And that's because what he had recognized, and when they found out, how were you able to do this? He says, because their problem is my problem too. And he simply said, 
just think of it this way. Do you ever notice when there is a problem that you recognize that you're there? Mm. So that problem is really an extension of who you are. And he says, I just simply cleared that with love and forgiveness. And when you look at, for instance, psycho psychology, psychotherapy, if a person comes in, they come in with the problem and the therapist takes the position, I'm here to listen, but I'm separate from this one. In fact, the psychologist has the same problem. <laughs> <laughs> and the idea that you can have something like light work show and get you to see and appreciate and embody the idea that we are interconnected and we're all in this together that would profoundly change your outlook on life, I would think. Oh, my God. I do that with my clients all the time. In fact, I sometimes laugh that, you know, I'm going through a particular issue and then I'll get a couple of clients in a row who are exactly uh, working with that issue. And it, it forces me because I'm thinking, gosh, I'm maybe one step ahead of them if they had <laughs> on the same step. But, you know, it's different for me because I've designed my own method of counseling. I don't ascribe to any of the traditional methods that are out there today because I don't think they're good enough, truthfully. Um, I call it my Arise soul-based perspective. And so I bring in... Um, the sense that we are not these observers or, you know, we're just here to write this information and give you a prescription and tell you what to do, that we really all are, like you're saying, we are all part of this human condition. And I usually tell people, there's nothing that you could tell me that I haven't probably personally experienced myself mm -hmm. or a loved one has gone through. I mean, we really are all in this together. And let's go get a higher perspective on why you're here and how I, how I can help you to get out of where you are. But it's done with a lot of compassion and love. It's not done with a sense of, because even again, the quantum physicists are saying, if you know anything about their initial double-blind experiments, just observing the wave changes it to a particle. So the observing alone or the witnessing alone changes the whole perspective of reality. So just by somebody coming to me and me even witnessing their story with compassion and love, that alone changes the dynamic of that story. And then together, gosh, we make a good team. We kind of partner together. I call it on a hero's journey. We partner together. Because like you said, I've been there, done that, so I kind of know, oh, there's a, there's a quicksand over this way, or there's, you know, there's a cliff over that way. Let's try and navigate through here. I've been on the terrain. Otherwise, if I haven't been on that terrain, they wouldn't be coming to me. Have you experienced miracles through this work? I actually have. And, um, but, Daniel, I don't, ever, I don't like to say it's through the actual work itself because I don't know if that's true. I mean, the person who comes and has a, a miracle change, physical, which is unusual for me. I do some physical work, but I've been trained mental and emotional. So I'm more used to seeing shifts and changes. Physical change is amazing. Even to me, I, I still am humbled and amazed. But is it really me or the method? I mean, I'm setting up a particular resonance of love and light and compassion and healing energies, but that person has to set the intent themselves. They want to change, and then they step into that change. So it's really a soup, let's say. It's not mm -hmm. anything in particular. It's not me in particular, and it's not the method in particular. It's all of that together, but the main component is that person's destiny path and their willingness to step into a, a healing paradigm, and then that works. So I don't know... You know, as a scientist, I can't really say I have all the causality pieces together, but it's definitely a piece of it. I would say it's a piece of it, but I don't take any um, anything upon myself. Even so many people have said to me, oh, my God, Laurel, before I saw you, this and this and this, and after just one session or two sessions, this and this and this. But I always say, oh, I'm so glad you feel better, and, um, you know, let's keep it up and move forward. I don't feel... I mean, I know they're ascribing it to me or the method, but I don't believe that is possibly the case. It has to be really the healing within them. More that you're the vehicle that allows these things to work through you, in other words. Right. I kind of set, let's say, a frequency level for them. I bring in a lot of unconditional love, and I bring a higher soul perspective. I try to get guided information from their, the beings that work with them, 
sometimes people who have transitioned. I actually get sometimes information from loved ones who have transitioned. I can't always promise I'll get that. That's why I don't say it to everyone. But if, if it's meant for their healing, I'll be open to getting information for them. So it's it's like a really a beautiful, loving embrace that they're held in. But they it's their destiny path because I've worked with people who still have who, who that they transitioned they died and and but it was beautiful i mean their change from the death process from the beginning to the end was just so magnificent and so again very humbling for me to be a part of um but it's them it's their destiny path and their willingness to step into their light their own who they really are because to me who we really are we're beings of love and light mm-hmm. who consciously on a soul level choose this wonderful play that we're involved in. And um, when we get to the sticky parts, we just have to see we didn't choose it on a personality level, but on a soul level, there's, there's a reason and a purpose. And if you can get that part of it, what some of the reason and purpose could be, it makes a huge difference. And then things align very differently for you. And just imagine, too, as our listeners decide to maybe move in this direction to learn about this light work, to actually take uh, classes and to develop a skill, how much they may not take this and maybe apply it to an actual career, but how it might profoundly change their outlook on life and make them just sort of look at the decisions they've made and realize maybe it's time to shift gears now that I see things much differently. Absolutely. I mean, really, because that, if it ties up your free energy and now you're kind of vibrating for all of us, a sense of peace within yourself, a sense of at the time I made the best decisions I could make or even now I'm making the best decisions I can make. And to be able to be, that's why I tell people, you don't have to make this as a career. Not everybody's going to be like me and have a private practice and teach classes. And most people don't want to do that. They want to feel good about themselves and their right. life. And they want to make a difference somehow, but they're not sure how. So as if you can understand that that we are vibrational beings in a vibrational world. Everything around us is vibrating. Electrons are going, and it's mostly empty space. I think they say an atom, it's the only nucleus, the only piece is like a size of a pea in a football field. So <laughs> we're mostly empty space, or the so-called empty space, um, and we're vibrating. So if we can vibrate with more compassion to ourselves and love and a feeling of gratitude and gratefulness, my God, that's changing the world. It Some people say is. you only need one half of 1% to change the world. I mean, one half of 1%, that's all we need. So if each individual person could feel, you know, so much peace inside themselves and love, it's really hard to have compassion and love for yourself. No really doubt hard. about that. First of all, I want to thank you for taking the time to be on our program today and sharing a possibility with our listeners about you know, a direction they may decide to go with their lives, whether it's just to empower themselves personally toward uh, the piece that you're talking about or perhaps share that talent with other people so that they can begin to feel the same. You know, it's just it's a wonderful gift that we all have inside of us. It's just a matter of bringing it to the surface, developing it, and actually just sharing it. You know, and it's infinite. It's a beautiful thing. If you could, could you give out your website information for our listeners? Uh, sure. It's um, www.ariseguide.com. Dr. Laura Lynn, thank you so much for joining us here on the Beyond 50 Radio. Thank Radio you for Radio. inviting me. It was wonderful talking to you, and I really appreciated all your thoughtful questions, Daniel. Well, you made me think deeper about things. <laughs> thank Hope you for one day we'll... the program. That'll be fun. Come and visit me sometime. You bet. Do that, okay. definitely. All righty. Yeah, thank... Bye-bye. You bet. We want to thank you, the listeners out there, for tuning in. You can find out more. Visit us at beyond50radio.com, and that is the number 50. And also follow us on Twitter at beyond50radio. And follow on the conversation thread every Friday, hashtag beyond50radio on Twitter. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you for tuning in. This is the Beyond 50 Radio program. And remember, live your day past halfway.